my name is Chris Rizzo. I am a pediatrician and I'm the chairperson of the section on advances in therapeutics and technology of the American Academy of Pediatrics. I know that's a mouthful, but the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, has 67,000 pediatrician members, mainly in the US and Canada, but we work closely with other pediatric organizations around the world. The section that I chair, the section on advances in therapeutics and technology, has about a thousand members. And these are pediatricians who have a special interest in developing new medications, medical devices, and technology to improve the health of infants, children, teens, and young adults. I'm going to use children and kids to really mean, you know, kids of all ages. In our section, we have pediatricians who conduct research on new and existing treatments and devices. We have pediatricians who work for companies that make these drugs and devices. And we have pediatricians who work in government who decide whether a treatment or a device can be used in patients. Our section has had a very valuable partnership with ICANN for many years because we want to hear what kids have to say about their own medical care. So today I'm here to tell you that we want to hear from you. We want you to tell us what you wish for regarding your medical care and treatment. And I'll go into more about that in a minute. Uh, but we are very interested in hearing from you. We are in the process in my section of of putting together our plan of action on what we want to do. So we want your input to help guide where we want to focus our efforts to improve the health of kids. So when thinking about research on treatments for kids, it's important to remember that it was not too long ago that there were very few studies conducted in children. Medicines used to be tested only in adults. And once a medicine was on the market, Doctors could prescribe them to children, but there were no studies in children, so they would have to guess what dose to use or guess on whether they would be safe or not or what the effect might be. Society used to think they wanted to protect children from research, you know, not experiment on them. One of the first things I learned as a pediatrician is that kids are not just small adults. Their body works different from adults and they're constantly changing and growing. So several years ago, there was a change in the philosophy. In the US and in Europe, any drug approved for adults now has to be studied in children and has to be studied carefully in children, but still studied to understand what dose was needed, whether the effects were similar to those seen in adults. And we've learned so much about how to better use medications in children as a result of this change. Now, rather than protecting children from research, we are protecting them through research. For medical devices, it's even more challenging because children's bodies are growing and medical devices for adults often don't fit in children's bodies. And devices made for children often need to be revised as kids' bodies grow. This creates a special challenge that our AAP section works on to make sure that the needs of kids are made a priority. So in thinking about the, um, the issue of drugs being tested in adults first and then in children, I began thinking about the situation with COVID-19 vaccines. Obviously the disease uh, is, seems to be much more serious in adults, so it made sense to ensure vaccine that works in older adults was developed first. But from the start, there were many pediatricians who were calling for the vaccine companies to plan studies in children at the same time. We didn't want children to be an afterthought. Studies in adults were conducted first, of course, followed by studies in children. But I, I think about this a lot. I wonder what would have happened if children actually had worse disease than adults? Would we have waited until studies were done in adults before they were done in children? Or would there have been pressure to study 
children first. It, it would have been an interesting debate. And thankfully, we do have vaccines. And hopefully, they will become very much more widely available um, across the world. But it is interesting to think about in the rush to develop a vaccine, whether um, you know the needs of children were considered from the start. And uh, there were many pediatricians who were reminding everyone who was working on it uh, how important it is to make sure that we have uh, adequate research um, to support their use in children. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of background on, on me and why I became a pediatrician and, and to have you guys think about whether you want to have a career in healthcare, or what, or, you know, as you think about what you want to be when you grow up, you know, I'm still thinking about that, but, you know, especially I, I know a lot of colleagues in healthcare who went into it because of their own experience as a patient when they were a child and how, uh, how they looked up to the people who cared for them and how they valued what they did. And they wanted to either give back to future generations or, um, you know, model that, that, type, that type of behavior. Um, <clears throat> so I got into um, medicine because, you know, I, I wanted to help people, but I really liked working with kids. When I was in high school and college, I umpired Little League Baseball. Once I got into medical school, it was very clear I, I wanted to go into pediatrics. Um, but it was my own experience with my, my brother who, when, when he was a baby, he actually developed an infection with a, from a virus called RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, a very common virus. Um, but we don't have a vaccine, uh, for, for RSV, uh, yet there are vaccines that have, that have been developed that, that uh, haven't panned out and, and they're still working on some, but, um, our RSV, they've been working on vaccines for 50 years, but it, but it's that personal story of my brother that makes me, you know, want to keep working in healthcare. But even as a physician, you know, if you find something that you're passionate about and, and you, and you want to help patients, you know, knowing that you're doing something good makes it worthwhile when, when it's a busy day. Um, and, and you realize that, that it helps motivate you. I, I actually told my own daughter that, um, you know, that, you know, be, being a doctor, one of, the, one of the nicest things is that I can ask almost any question and it can be okay, you know, uh, in the doctor patient relationship. Um, but she, she ended up going into, into medicine. She just graduated from medical school last month and started her residency this week in internal medicine. She didn't go into pediatrics, but she went into internal medicine. So I, I think for those of you who, who are interested um, in a career in healthcare, you should highly consider it because you know better than most what the experience is from the, from the patient's point of view, and that'll make you um, a, a much better doctor. I, I used to work at a hospital that did um, patient surveys and this was years ago. And on the patient surveys, uh, uh, it was about six months after my daughter was born, there was a patient survey that said, I've always liked Dr. Rizzo as a pediatrician, but he has gotten so much better since he had his own child, um, w which I think, you know, gives you that, gives you that perspective. Um, I, I wanted to do beyond just healthcare for one-on-one -on -one patients. I got into into the American Academy of Pediatrics because I recognize that sometimes we have to work together to get change and improve the care and improve healthcare. So, you know, as I mentioned, the, the American Academy of Pediatrics has 67,000 uh, pediatrician members. I got involved in the section on advances in therapeutics and technology uh, because I recognize that there are a lot of efforts to, uh, focused on adults and sometimes uh, the needs of kids are given an afterthought. So kids can't uh, vote. And at many ages, they, they, they're unable to really speak up for themselves uh, um, until they get you know, in their teenage years. And so they need people who really are focused on their concerns. But as much as I think I know what kids want just from working with kids, and it's, mu it's so much better to hear, 
hear from you directly. That's why I'm here today. So back to what my AAP section wants from all the kids and parents uh, listening to me today. We want to hear from you. There is a link to a survey on the page you're viewing, and the link will be sent to you after this meeting. Please go there and let me know what you wish for. We're interested in your thoughts and concerns about COVID and the disease and vaccines in kids. If you just have a question, please put your question in. We won't be able to answer you directly, but we will work with ICANN leadership to provide answers to the most common questions. So we're, so we're interested in, in any questions or suggestions that you have around COVID and COVID vaccines. But we really want to hear broad, more broadly than that. Um, we're very interested in how you think medical care for kids can be better overall, not, not just related to COVID. We want to know whether you have an idea for a medicine that you would like to see invented or how a current medicine can be made better. Uh, we want to know if you think a medical device should be invented to help with a medical condition or whether you would like to see an improvement in a current medical device. We want to know how pediatricians and specialists can do better in explaining things and in keeping in touch and how things can be better during a doctor's appointment. Anything on your mind is fair game. We wanna hear from you. I'll take all of your suggestions and we will give them to the pediatricians in my section who design new medicines and devices and who conduct the research so, so that your ideas can be heard. Finally, I wanna stress how important the work of ICANN is in making sure your collective voice is heard when it comes to medical care of kids. But I also wanna stress how important it is for you to speak up during your own medical care, during your own doctor's appointments. If you have a question, ask your doctor or nurse. If you have a suggestion to improve your treatment, mention it. Although doctors and nurses may seem busy, we all went into healthcare to help patients. And those of us who went into pediatrics love talking to kids. Adults, not so much, but I love talking to kids. So speak up and let your doctor know what you're thinking. I want to make sure that um, you, you understand how this information uh, is, is going to be used. We, we uh, are very interested in, in having your wish list. Now, if we were live in person, you know, we could have a panel discussion, have some kids come up and, and give their own suggestions. We could have a one-on-one -on -one exchange. We could, you know, we could talk. Um, but in this, in this uh, virtual environment, um, we're, we're doing the next best thing. And that is making a survey available. Um, so feel free to go there. Uh, answer. There's just some general questions about, uh, you know, where you might see improvement, but there's fields for you to just en enter whatever you want. So if you have a question that you would, you think other kids might have, or you have put it in there. If you have uh, things that you think you would like to see for your own healthcare improved, how things can be better. I'm going to, we're going to take this information and share it with all the pediatricians who, who work on these, uh, on the research, on the development of medicines and the development of devices for kids. So when we get the, um, when, we, when we look at the wish list, uh, uh, I, I will work with my team at the AAP and we will kind of compile it um, and, and, and put a list, but I'm going to share it with my leadership team of the section we're going to, um, and, and those of us work conducting research, some of us work for companies that make these medicines and devices, and others work in the government to decide where these are going to be funded. So these are, these are the people who are deciding what, uh, you know, what drugs and device, what medications and devices are, are going to be developed for kids. And this is your opportunity to get your in input there. Um, they, they will then take that information and incorporate it into, into their plans where, where possible. Obviously, 
things might, you know, you might have an idea for something that, that is still years away. The tech, you know, the technology or the science isn't there yet, but we can work, you know, we can start working on it. If um, that's how ideas are generated, that's um, is just uh, some, somebody comes up with an idea and we look and see whether it's something that, that is feasible, whether it's possible. Um, so, so those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Um, and, and, you know, it's one thing for, for a doctor, for me, or, or, you know, we value parents' opinion too, speaking on, on behalf of their children, especially if the children are too young to speak for themselves. But, but uh, it's, it's one thing for us to think about what you need, what you as kids need. Um, but hearing directly from you make, makes a lot more sense because you're the one, you're, you're the one living with it and you're the one, um, you know, who, who will, um, have, have the improved health. So you're, you're the most important stakeholder. And so that's why, um, we're interested. That's why I can't exist is to get the voice of children, you know, involved in, in, in research projects in the care of children <clears throat> at, at every level. Um, <clears throat> it's such a great opportunity that I can offers and that I want to offer you today. You know, so please um, go to that survey. It, it's, it, it is something that I'm taking seriously. Uh, we did a survey of our own members about what we, what they want to hear, what they want from the, from the section. I want to hear, <clears throat> hear from you, the kids, the patients that we serve. So um, so please go to that survey uh, and, and, and tell us, uh, tell us what you want. Yeah, so I think it's very important for kids to speak up um, when they have a concern um, or they have a suggestion, you know, not, not just through the survey or, or through ICANN, but just with your own doc doctor or nurse. Um, I, I can think of an example of a, a, a kid who was around, he was probably around 11 or 12, and he was coming in every week or two for allergy shots. And, uh, you know, uh, we would put him back in the exam room and then, you know, the, the nurse would go in, but he, he, he would get so, um, so anxious and uh, almost, almost get, develop a panic attack. I remember one, one time I heard all of this noise in the exam room. I go, I'm like, what's going on in here? And here the mom and the dad, they're wrestling with him to hold him down for the shot. <laughs> I'm like, this is not good. That Right. This is not good. And so, you know, I basically, you know, the next time he came in, I, I didn't put him back in the exam room. I went back to my office, which is just, you know, a desk and a chair and some bookshelves. And I was just talking to him and, you know, uh, he, he explained to me that, that years ago, like there was something in, in that exam room, like with one of the shots where uh, that's what he remembers. And he, he doesn't really remember what happened. He just remember how terrified he was. And, and so I said, okay, we're not, we're never going back in, in the exam room now, you know, we're going to, we, we, you can come, you sit at the nurse's station, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a comic book or something. And we, and, and actually it wasn't, but it was, it was his feedback that solved the problem. Um, I would have never guessed this if I hadn't taken the time to talk to him. Um, and so from then on, you know, he would come in the, the shot itself. Yeah. Nobody likes getting a shot, but if you, if you're not, if you're not as anxious and, and worried and, and scared about the whole situation, uh, sometimes the little things, the, the little bad things um, don't seem, don't seem as bad. And, and it really made things a lot better for everybody, um, especially for him. Um, you know, there obviously there are many cases where, you know, kid, older kids are afraid to admit they have trouble swallowing pills um, and that maybe there's a liquid or crushed for, or the, you know, there's some easier way. So don't be afraid to speak up and, and ask that question. Maybe maybe there is uh, not something that, that can be done better, but you'll never know. They'll, you'll never know if you don't ask. So those, that's very important to, to speak up and talk to your own doctor or nurse. So I wanna thank ICANN for giving me time on the agenda. And I wanna thank all of you viewing this for your attention. And I really wanna hear from you. So please give us your wish list.